Hello everyone, uh, I'm Dmitry Ovchinikov uh, and I'm a student in uh, Silesian University in Opala, Czech Republic. And uh, today I would like to uh, present uh, our recent work, uh, which was done together with uh, my supervisor, Jan Shre, and uh, also with collaboration with Roman Konopre. Uh, it is about uh, influence of tidal force and magnetic field generated by surrounded toroidal structure onto the black hole shadow. Uh, so, uh, actually, it's outline of my uh, presentation. I will start with a uh, few words about motivation. Then I would like to briefly uh, explain the model uh, which was studied. Uh, it is a model of tidally and magnetically deformed black hole. Uh, I will tell some words about Preston Poisson metric, which was used uh, for analysis. And uh, then I will go to the uh, construction of the black hole shadow. And uh, at the end, I will show you a comparison of the Shadow of the Preston Poisson black hole with Schwarzschild and Fair black hole for some uh, uh, representative parameters. Uh, so, actually, the first question why the studying of the black hole shadow is important. And uh, as uh, in, in, the first, uh, in the first talk, uh, Matsek uh, will lose uh, in Tel, uh, there are uh, recent observations. Uh, in electromagnetic and gravitational spectrum. And it plays an important role in uh, our understanding of uh, black hole geometry. And uh, it is a good tool for testing general relativity in the stroke uh, field regime. Um, but uh, as uh, Matic also mentioned, uh, the accuracy of the measurements uh, leave the space for different interpretations and uh, for some alternative theories. And uh, there are a number of work where the shadow of the hole was studied. And uh, in principle, most of them can be uh, divided in two main branches. Uh, it is a work where uh, shadow of, uh, of black hole in uh, alternative or modified theories of gravity was studied and shadow in pre presence of some distribution of matter around the black hole. Uh, actually, environmental factors which can influence on black hole, uh, there are uh, plenty of factors, but uh, it's in that tidal gravitational force and the uh, strong mag and magnetic field can be uh, most of the physically relevant uh, factors. And uh, our purpose was uh, consider the solution, which on the one hand reflect effects of the tidal force and magnetic field on the black hole shadow, and uh, uh, not imply, imply some detailed and specific region of this tidal force. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, such tidal force and magnetic field configuration, which are a solution of corresponding Einstein Maxwell equation. Uh, and uh, that is compatible with the black hole geometry at the horizon. Uh, so, uh, in, in our work, uh, it was studied uh, the Preston Poisson metric, uh, obtained as the pertur perturbative solution of Einstein Maxwell equation uh, with the help of what I call gauge formulas. To be honest, just uh, few words about the metric, uh, which we do not uh, uh, obtain by ourselves. We just take it and consider it. And uh, the Preston Boson metric uh, described uh, the space time near the system consisting of the uh, spherically symmetric uh, black hole uh, perturbated by uh, surrounding uh, Giants, solenoid, or some torus. Uh, and uh, the, the effects of uh, magnetic field and tidal force uh, is uh, asymptotically, uh, actually, is brought to the asymptotically flat uh, space time. Uh, 
and uh, so, some points uh, which I should mention about the metric. Uh, it is implied that the perturbation created by the magnetic field, which is small, and uh, other uh, crucial thing that the unmodified Preston Poisson metric cannot be used to study uh, the region close to the uh, close to the torus, to the region close to the torus, because it was obtained by some perturbative uh, methods. Uh, and uh, in principle, we can consider the uh, inside area uh, between the uh, horizon of the black hole and uh, far from the inner edge of the torus. So uh, it is possible to write preston poisson metric in this way and uh, the function of uh, the, the metric components has uh, these forms. And uh, it is possible to see that uh, in the limit when B and uh, and the epsilon goes to zero, uh, it goes to the uh, Schwarzschild limit. Uh, so as I said, uh, there is a problem uh, with this metric that uh, it can be applied only in the uh, region far from the torus and uh, near with the black hole but uh, to provide uh, optical observation and to study some optical phenomenon, phenomena, we should uh, to connect the source of photons uh, with a distant observer. And uh, in our work, uh, it was done by matching the Preston Poisson metric with uh, some metric uh, which is asymptotically flat and has a post-Newtonian behavior at the large distance. Uh, from the black hole. Uh, so, and uh, to do this, uh, first things which was the, uh, which we need to do is transform to the uh, standard uh, coordinate tier theta phi, and uh, uh, then it can be written in, in this form. And uh, it is possible to see that the components of the metric uh, can be split into the uh, Schwarzschild part and the contribution of uh, these uh, Preston Poisson terms. Also, uh, the, I, I should note it that this, these components are proportional to the uh, co components g theta theta 1 and g theta theta 2 uh, proportional to the R squared is a contribution of the Preston Poisson metric and we consider a uh, distant observer uh, in infinity, which means the R goes to the infinity. Uh, so uh, we require that at some value of the radial coordinate n zero, such that still we have uh, some uh, actually this thing should be satisfied. The uh, tidal pore should be uh, small and the uh, magnetic field also uh, should be small. Uh, and uh, the Preston Poisson metric uh, is smoothly matched with, we imply that Preston Poisson metric should smoothly uh, match with some metric which we do not know yet. Uh, and uh, Interpolating between the Schwarzschild light asymptotically reference space time and the Preston Poisson metric. And uh, we imply that uh, in some point uh, R0, where we are going to match this metric, uh, components of the metric uh, should be the same of the Preston Poisson one and what we are uh, looking, the metric we are, which we are looking for and which is uh, have this. Uh, Post Newtonian behavior and asymptotically flat. And the first derivative of this metric at these points, Preston Poisson metric at these points, and the new one uh, modified Preston Poisson metric should be uh, also equal at the point. And we start by choosing, actually, in order to provide the correct post Newtonian behavior, it's sufficient to require that interpolating metric have the same form. As, I, uh, as, as Preston Poisson one, and uh, the title uh, and the title and force and magnetic field become the following decaying function of R. Uh, 
uh, we just uh, stay in the form of the uh, Preston Poisson metric the same, but we uh, reintroduce the this uh, parameter beta and so in, in such a way that it's rapidly go to zero when error increase uh, faster than the uh, components uh, of the contribution of the first and Poisson part. And uh, after uh, implying uh, uh, from this matching condition and uh, these two uh, kind of ansatz, we uh, can get this kind of coefficients. And in principle, we are ready to uh, connect a further uh, observer with the uh, source of uh, photons. Uh, so. Actually, the, the first step, uh, the easiest one, it is consider uh, moving of photon in the equatorial, uh, equatorial plane and uh, get the M radius of the photon orbits. Uh, the first reason because it is a simple, uh, sim the simplest thing, and the other things, it uh, can give us kind of anchor for. Uh, finding the proper R, R, R0, the point where we can match the matrix. Uh, in equatorial plane, uh, metric uh, will become uh, more simple and uh, we can write uh, in standard form uh, equation of motions and we can analytically get the solution for the radius of photon orbits just also in standard way by uh, this condition we ask that uh, the radial component of the uh, photon on the circular orbit shouldn't change and the velocity also uh, in radial direction should be zero and uh, we, we can get the radius of uh, photon orbits. And if you know the radius of, of photon orbits, we also can get the impact parameter uh, of the, on this orbit. And uh, after that, uh, we are ready to calculate the diameter of the black hole in an equatorial plane. Uh, for the farther observer, it uh, can be uh, presented by uh, this simple uh, formula. Uh, where the uh, L is the uh, impact parameter of the uh, of this geodetic and the D it is a uh, D zero it is a distance from the uh, source from the black hole and uh, actually we consider the uh, parameters of the black hole which has a, a mass equal to the mass of the uh, central black hole. Uh, in the galaxy M87, and uh, D0 is equal to the uh, distance to this uh, black hole. And uh, we get uh, some uh, some quantity for three different cases, Preston, Poisson, Terence, Schwarzschild. And it is possible to notice that the, for some choosing of the parameter, it is uh, possible to get uh, the diameter of the shadow of the black hole, which lies uh, between the Schwarzschild and Kerr. Uh, so, and uh, the next thing uh, uh, which we need to do, uh, it is uh, to get the shadow uh, of the black hole, not only in the equatorial plane. And uh, in this case, it is uh, we couldn't do it analytically and uh, we should do it numerically. And also as a first thing, uh, uh, we uh, need to go to, to change the coordinate, uh, which are good for numerical integration. And after that, we uh, will get a little bit different, the same metric but in another coordinates. And, uh, in order to uh, provide retracing, we need to integrate the geodesic equations in common way. Uh, in this equation, k is k u is a component of the wave propagation vector. Uh, so uh, 
for the distant observer, uh, we need to construct uh, a static Minkow scale of tetrad. And uh, in this picture, it is shown how the direction of angles which we will use further are related uh, with this tetrad. And uh, other thing which I should mention that uh, for uh, integrating geodesic equations, numerically we should know uh, the starting point, uh, the initial condition. Uh, the position of the uh, photon uh, actually x mu and the uh, projection of the uh, propagation vector to the axis. And it is presented uh, on this picture. So uh, the, the next things uh, which we need to do this on the right hand side, uh, it is presented plot, uh, which is which present actually the detector of the observer. And each uh, point of this plot uh, related with some alpha and beta uh, coordinates, uh, which are uh, related uh, with the uh, components of the propagation vector. And uh, uh, what we do, uh, we uh, divide uh, the beta can take the uh, values from zero to two pi. We divide it in this uh, uh, So uh, we, we divided the region between zero and two pi uh, into n pieces. And for each n, uh, we uh, divide the uh, interval of uh, changes of alpha from zero to alpha max. And for example, we choose some beta and uh, choose some alpha. Calculate uh, from uh, this equation uh, initial condition of the of the propagation vector and calculate and we are looking for the uh, turning point uh, the red dotted here are uh, points uh, which de de describe uh, uh, the trajectories uh, geodetics which uh, has the turning points and then the blue one described the one which doesn't have turning points, which means that for the red one, photons go to up to the infinity, and in the uh, the, the blue one uh, falls on the black hole. And uh, then we choose uh, two points which are close uh, to this uh, uh, region where it is uh, changed, and we can do the same operation and, and in principle uh, we can find not exact but uh, approximate uh, radius of black hole shadow with uh, given accuracy so uh, we do it for all of the alpha and beta and uh, in such a way we can construct the black hole and now uh, on this plot, uh, it is presented uh, the shadow of the uh, Schwarzschild black hole, uh, black dashed, and the Preston Poisson shadow of the black hole for some uh, representative parameters. And it is uh, can be noticed from the graph that with increasing of the parameter. Uh, B and epsilon, uh, the shadow uh, become the Preston Poisson shadow become uh, prolapsed. The vertical uh, size of the shadow increase. Actually, it is not possible to see here, but uh, the horizontal uh, diameter of the black hole uh, decreases a little. And on the right hand side, it is shown how the uh, radius depends on the of the angle uh, beta. And uh, on this graph, uh, it is presented comparison of uh, the 
Schwarzschild, uh, Black Hole Shadow with Preston Poisson and Care One for some uh, representative parameters which we choose in order to obtain the radius which is uh, close to the absorbed results uh, near with 42 microarc seconds. And on the right hand side, this is uh, shown the behavior of the radius. Uh, uh, when the data changes. So in our work, uh, we have actually, uh, it is a summary, it's the finish of my presentation, and I just uh, read what it was done. Uh, we have studied the channel of by the deformed partial black hole, uh, supposing that deformations were induced by the tidal force and magnetic field and represented by the Preston Poisson solution. It was shown that even relatively small values of the tidal force or magnetic field produce noticeable deviation of the shadow from the spherical shape, making the shadow prolate. Uh, in our simulation, uh, an observer is uh, located in the equatorial plane of the black hole. Uh, first, we have discussed the diameter of the Preston Poisson black hole shadow, uh, considering photon moving in the equatorial plane, and then uh, the resulting diameter of the Preston Poisson black hole shadow, uh, which we get is 36.1 uh, micro seconds, and it is smaller than the corresponding shadow of the Schwarzschild black hole, just for some uh, parameters beta and epsilon. Uh, and uh, it can be larger, for example, than. Uh, shadow of the Kerr black hole, uh, we spin uh, close to the critical one. Uh, and then using uh, numerical integration of the Dejek equation, we have constructed full shadow of Preston Poisson black hole for three representative values of space-time, parameter beta and epsilon. Uh, and uh, it is possible to see that uh, uh, the larger are the values of the space-time parameters beta and epsilon, the smaller is the horizontal diameter of uh, Preston Poisson black hole. Actually, it is uh, impossible to see here, but it changes a little and uh, it becomes uh, larger in vertical uh, direction, vertical diameter of the shadow uh, increase. So, and we just compare it for some better, for, for some parameters with the Schwarzschild and Kerr black hole. And here there are some reference which was used. Actually, uh, we already uh, write the, some paper which is uh, already sent to archive and uh, also submitted to the journal, but not accepted yet. Thank so, you, Dima, for your interesting talk, if that's all you wanted to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, actually, that is all. Thank you very much again. And I would like to ask audience uh, if they have any questions. So it's time. Yeah. I use... May I ask a question? Yes, sure. Okay. Uh, Dima, thank you very yes. much for the presentation. Uh, so uh, you have got uh, finally two results. One of them is the di diameter of the uh, black hole shadow, mm -hmm. but the diameter of the black hole shadow does not make much sense because it, it may depend, depend from the wavelengths because uh, mm -hmm. uh, the plasma surrounding it can change the size of the, uh, mm -hmm. of the black hole shadow. So it is... Uh, uh, your consideration is purely theoretical because there is no, you, you consider it in the pure vacuum, which is not uh, the case. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, other result is more interesting because uh, you have got uh, the shape, uh, for example, in in your case, uh, the black, uh, for example, when you consider the Kerr black hole, you have some dent. So one part mm -hmm. will be dented with compared to other part, but in your case, the symmetry is not violated. So if, yes. uh, uh, so from the uh, symmetry and shape, in principle, you can get the information about your black hole. But uh, the question is how 
big this deflection. So what do you want, uh, do, do you assume for the uh, selected parameters in order to give uh, how much in the percentage this uh, deflection for the real parameters which you can uh, uh, introduce? It is my question. Uh, actually, we do not uh, calculate in percentage how it will differ from the uh, other uh, models. Uh, probably it is uh, good to uh, consider it question and uh, so okay uh, this uh, this shows you that it is uh, a shape is uh, different because uh, yes shape is, uh, is different it's because it becomes uh, so uh, mm -hmm. in vertical direction yeah yes uh, it's yes and this effect also depends on the slightly on position of the matching yeah, yeah. condition. Observer, yes. yes, actually it is so, uh, also other uh, things which are under consideration. Uh, uh, anyway, this, this image is very interesting. You need to explore more in order to get some... Yeah, sure. We are at the starting point now. Okay. Good, good. Very good. Thank you for a question. You. And I hear uh, Maciek is raising his hand. So Maciek. Please yeah, ask so a question. Th th that will be uh, a comment and a question. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, about this uh, wavelength dependence. So, of course, the uh, region of emission uh, is depend, depend wave, characteristic wavelength is depending on the region of emission. So, you do expect this direct emission part uh, to, uh, to depend on that, whether you get larger ring uh, for uh, uh, longer wavelengths and smaller ring for shorter wavelengths. This is, uh, uh, this is of course, uh, true. On the other hand, what uh, is shown here, this is the critical curve. This is the asymptotic yeah. location uh, in the sky of the observer of the photons that uh, linger around the uh, photon sphere uh, sufficiently long. This is a mathematical construct not an observable, strictly speaking, yes. but in any case, this one is achromatic. It's, uh, it doesn't depend on, uh, on wavelength. Uh, and in some limit, maybe in the future with some uh, observations that are being designed currently, maybe in a decade, we will actually be able to probe, uh, probe this regime. But this is like a song of the future. So that, that was a comment about what is uh, achromatic and uh, uh, what is uh, not, uh, and uh, the, the question is, I understand you do need uh, some kind of different source of mass to get these tidal, um, uh, tidal effects. So I would just wonder if, uh, if uh, you have an idea about uh, like magnitude of uh, what kind of mass you would need to generate uh, this sort of distortions that uh, you are describing. Uh, for instance, uh, like imagine that we have a hundred million solar masses black hole orbiting the M87 central black hole. We cannot, I, I don't think we can exclude it currently based on the observations that EHT made for the technical reasons, including that we don't have a face referencing. So our, our image is insensitive to uh, motions of this, uh, tr transversal mo motions of this image. So we cannot do like, you know, uh, tests of uh, uh, there being some uh, uh, image shifting left and right because of the um, uh, there being another black hole orbiting around it. We cannot do it with, uh, with the current thing. So I think we have pretty loose limits of uh, what, uh, a, what kind of a companion, a uh, supermassive companion we could stick there. So my question is like, uh, do you know the, this sort of number uh, at the moment? For instance, if there was a black hole of 100 million solar masses mm -hmm. orbiting M87, would that be enough to generate the effects uh, you are describing? Actually, I couldn't tell you the number now exactly, but uh, definitely it, uh, there is some kind of... Uh, discussion of the limits uh, in the original paper of uh, Preston Poisson. Uh, actually, uh, this metric doesn't consider some uh, some special uh, uh, source of uh, tidal force and 
magnetic field, they do not consider any kind of uh, state equation and so on. But uh, there is a, sorry, uh, but there is some, uh, some discussion related to, to the mass of the surrounded structure. And uh, I, now I couldn't tell exactly uh, what, what is the limit. Okay, but it would be extremely interesting to uh, speculate on that in your in your paper, for instance. Uh, th thank you for your recommendation. Uh, we will consider. Uh... For, for sure, it will be interesting to put it there. Thank you, Maciek. <laughs>